Om Shanti. Today we have Tina Ben from US who is taking us through a special session on emerging Sato Pradhan Sanskar. Over to you, Tina Ben. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Rakhi. And welcome, everyone. Very good morning. Um, I think before we start, I'm just going to play a little song. And what I would like you to do is just merge yourself in Baba's Drishti, allow yourself to be in his range of Drishti and you see to the extent that you feel you are seeing your own image in Baba's eyes and Baba is seeing his image in your eyes and feel that worthiness, you know, that I am God's child, I am an heir and I am worthy of the reward that he has brought for me. Okay, so let's start. Shanti, good morning again, everyone. Very happy to see you all. 
And so today's topic is about emerging the golden stage, right? Or sometimes I also call it as emerging the Sato Pradhan Sanskars. Golden stage is nothing but emerging that um, stage, right? Which is like golden aged. And when I was thinking about this topic, I just recently, like yesterday, I saw one of the pictures of Dadi Chanki and this is the picture I saw and I was like, wow. <laughs> and I remembered that in early days, you know, when dadis were like in their twenties, I, I think she must be in her twenties and teens and um, they used to live in the hostel and there was a lot of pampering, right? By Baba for each of them, he would like, even on their toothpaste, he, he would put toothpaste on their toothbrush and so on and so forth. And it was like a golden age for them, right? Literally, um, when Baba used to ask them, where are you staying? The answer they would give is that we are staying in golden age or we are staying in Paramtham. So literally they were living knowledge, right? And they had this awareness of their spiritual birth, of their alokic birth. Um, one of the bhog messages that Sister Moini brought for Dadi Gulzar was that Baba said that Dadi Gulzar was always in the awareness of her spiritual and alokic birth. And what Baba went on further to say is that that awareness helped her to go into that ascending stage. She was always able to ascend because she was always aware of her rights of being an heir child, you know, and that awareness of your rights is very, very important, right? And so I was thinking, I have been having this feeling since 2020 that we are sort of living in golden age, right? Baba has protected us so much from the outside world, the outside vibrations, the outside, you know, negativity. And he's given us so much time. I don't know about you all, but I work in a research lab and never ever in my life I have got the opportunity to sit at home and work. You know, I have always had to go to office. So when I got this opportunity, I was feeling that Baba gave us so much free time, right? Just like daddies had so much time. <laughs> And the feeling was that it is because he wants all of us to reach into that higher stage, that elevated stage. And with both Dadi's extension, you know, within this one year's time period, it feels like it's now or never, you know. And so in my heart, I really feel that this understanding of our reward is very, very important. So I would like to say, Puneet Bhai, can you please show the first poll? This is going to be a very interactive session and I hope you have a lot of fun um, and you can also put your answers in chat box. But here's the first question for you. Which of the two lines? Both are correct. But which of the one sounds more accurate to you? Satyug is coming, golden age is coming and we are becoming deities. And through your efforts, you have to bring golden age. Which one is more accurate? So there are 17 of you and we have 10 of you who have answered. If everyone can participate, that would be really amazing. Okay, just one second more. Then we can stop this. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so you can see the results. Hmm? Wonderful, hmm? very good. So all of you are correct. Through your efforts, you have to bring Golden Age Baba says, right? You have to bring it. So when I become golden age, or when I become pure, then Satyug will come, right? So very good, very nice. You all are on the right page. So let's move forward. If I can stop this. Okay. So then the other thing that I really am intrigued every time I listen in the Murli is Baba says, Chade to chake vekudras. You know, he says, if you climb, then you can taste the nectar of heaven, right? 
So this word climb you know, always comes. Climb means we are down and now we have to climb up, right? Means chadna hai. Have you seen a wooden ladder? Have you all seen a wooden ladder? No? Yes? Yes. Yes. And when you use a wooden ladder to go up, then how many steps, how many steps are there in that? Usually there are like 10 or 12 steps, right? And we say that we have to pay a lot of attention, right? Even if there are just 10 or 12 steps, we will ask somebody to hold it. And then we will say, okay, you uh, make sure I don't fall, right? And so this is that ladder, which has 84 steps. So you can imagine the height of the ladder, right? That's why Baba says it's a steep climb, right? You have to be very cautious. You have to be very careful. But the important thing is that there are four stages, usually Baba says you have to walk through. And then when you reach the highest point, you will be able to taste the taste of heaven or nectar of heaven, right? So then I want to um, know, you know, what is this reward? What is this nectar of heaven means, right? And so one of the other things that Baba usually says is, you know, you have to be aware of what you will get. Right? Baba says 21 births of inheritance. Inheritance of 21 births. How is it 21 births? What is the mathematics? If those who can speak, that would be wonderful. I would love to hear your voices. But if not, then you can put it in the chat box. 21 births is the um, Satyug and Treta Yug births. How many in Satyug? Eight. Okay. And in Treta Yug? 12. Okay, so 12 plus 8 is? 20. And 1 is Sangam Yuga. Okay, good. So, conference age birth is counted as an inheritance, right? So, I have to be aware that conference age birth is not an ordinary birth, right? I have to be aware that this is a very special birth. This is one of those 21 births. So, in this birth itself, I have to experience the golden age of stage and that is what dadis used to experience and so i'm going to ask punit bhai to bring up the poll second poll punit bhai okay so if i am aware of the inheritance or if i'm aware of where i want to reach what my aim is then what's the answer what is my aim Quick, quick, quick. <laughs> okay. Still a few of you are there. Okay. All right. Not all of you are answering, but that's fine. So this is the answer. And 60% of you are right. So we, the aim is to become Satopradhan. The aim, we don't say, yes, Baba says you have to be worthy of worship, but then that would include the deities who are part of the Silver Age, right? It's not specific. And my aim is not to become God's child. I am already God's child. So I don't need to have an aim that now I have to be God's child, right? And then my aim is also not to become resident of heaven because heaven would again means way, right? Yes, it is correct, but it is not specific. Like to become Satopradhan is very, very specific, right? So that's why the correct answer is to become Satopradhan. And most of you have given it right. And I will just bring this idea why it is important to have this awareness of the reward is I'll share one quick story. This is about the man and he has this Persian carpet and Persian carpets, if you know, are very, very beautiful, right? Uh, but he doesn't have space at home and no much use for it. So he goes to a shop and he tells the owner, I would like to sell this. Would you like to buy? 
and the owner looks at the carpet. The carpet is very beautiful, in very good condition. So he says, yes, how much would you want? And he says, $100. And so the owner is pretty happy and he instantly gives him $100. And the man is also very happy and he's about to leave the door. And as he's about to step out of the door, the owner of the shop runs to him and tells him, I have a quick question for you. Would you mind to tell me why did you not ask more than 100? Why did you only ask $100? And he says, oh, is there anything higher than $100? You know, so you see, <laughs> he was not even aware. Now, this is a story, of course, but he was not even aware that there is something which can be higher than $100. And what it means that he was not aware of the real value of what he had. You know, he was not aware of what he could have received, right? The reward he could have received or the profit he could have made by selling this carpet, right? And so what it means is when I am trying to ascend in the confidence stage, I cannot measure myself on the basis of the measurements of the Iron Age. Right? I cannot measure my success on the measurements that are used to measure success in Iron Age. I cannot use the measurements of the Iron Age to measure my happiness. Right? So if I ask you, what is success according to Iron Age? Right? And so I, I don't know if you can, if you're putting the answers in the chat, but um, if you see the way people measure in the Iron Age is like, for example, they would say, oh, if you have 100,000 subscribers on your YouTube channel, then you are successful, right? Or for example, I do a program and I get, um, you know, on Zoom and I get 1000 likes. So that means it was a big hit, right? Or it was successful. Or if I do a session and there are more people who are attending that, then I say, oh, it was successful. If I have more students attending, I say it was successful. So this is what, this is measuring success on the basis of the measurements of the Iron Age. But Baba defines for us success or happiness or whatever in a very different scale. Right. And so first and foremost, important thing that we need to remember is that I cannot measure my reward or I cannot see the reward in terms of how it is seen in the in the Iron Age. Right. So with that, we say that the aim is to become Satopradhan. And the way I can do that is by having the attention that we are not ordinary beings. Right. We are not ordinary. And. So I have to know my reward, but also I will not settle for anything less than being a golden aged soul, right? I will not settle for anything less. That is the aim I should, or that is the bhavna at least I should have, right? Towards my own efforts. Hmm? So then when one time um, Moini Didi had come to Midwest, it was back in 2011 and um, she, came for a public program, but then I was staying at the center. So after the public program, she just came to the center and we had a little chit chat after dinner. And it was just few of us. And she asked, kya banna hai? So I said, Sato Pradhan. And then she said, do you have a plan? And of course I was very quiet. <laughs> I was meeting her for the first time. And I said, um, in my mind, I said, what plan? You know, I just have to sit with Baba, purify myself, and I will become Sato Pradhan. What plan do I want? And that time, it was the first time she told me that, or she told us, I should say, it was on, to the whole group. And she was saying that you have to check your sanskars and you have to see if you are moving from Tamo Pradhan to Tamo to Rajo, to Sato, and then you will become Sato Pradhan. So it's never that you just jump from golden, uh, you jump from Iron Age into uh, Golden Age, right? The sanskars move in a reverse direction. Of course, the soul will go home and then come in the Golden Age. But then the sanskars, they move in the reverse cycle. And that idea was fascinating. You know, I was just intrigued and I loved it. And till date, that is my best um, you know, think about knowledge that I can constantly check myself. And since 2011, I believe two times, I remember Baba said this in the Murli, 
I don't remember when it was first time, but recently on 15th of December 2020, the Sakkar Murli said that souls that have become Tamo Pradhan now have to become Sato Pradhan. From being Tamo Pradhan, souls have to become Tamo, Rajo, Sato, and then Sato Pradhan. So Baba was very clear in this Murli, and then he went on to say that we have become very senseless, but now Baba is making us sensible, right? And being sensible was at least Tamo quality, but now we have to come even further, become Rajo and such. So it was very interesting to just get a reminder of this after so many years, but I thought that I'll just bring this up that this is how we have to move to our Sato Pradhan stage. And so what Baba does is usually in the Murlis, Baba will activate selective memory, right? He tells us to remember this, remember that, right? And so what do we have to remember? So Punipai, again, can I request you to show the third poll? Okay, hmm. there are 19 of you, if you all can quickly click on one or two or three or four, whatever you think, you can click on multiple ones in this one. Remember, you can click on multiple ones on this one. Perfect, we are 17 out of 19 of you have answered. There are only two of you who haven't answered, but let's stop, we can stop. So the, the right answer is actually three of them, right? So remember me is correct. Remember home is also correct. And remember scenes of Satyug is also correct. So majority of you are right. Baba never says, remember your past, right? He says, Biti ko chito So he will say, remember Satyug, you know, which is that sort of like our future or scenes of Satyug. But he never says, remember your past. So that one is not the correct answer, but rest are right. So why Baba is saying, remember me? Because when I remember Baba, it helps me to activate some of the memories and emerge those sanskars. When I remember home, I again activate the sanskars of silence and sanskars of peace and happiness and purity. When I remember scenes of Satyug, then again, I emerge uh, those memories of Satyug and I see myself in that. So that is beautiful. You all are doing great. <laughs> So then um, you know all of this actually, but it's just a different way of sharing. And so this is our cycle, right? We remember we have four ages and then the fifth one is this tiny little confluence age. And in the golden age, Baba says that you are in the Sato Pradhan stage. That means you're 16 celestial degrees full and aap devta kulke ho, hmm? deity clan. And then he says here, you are a warrior in Sato stage and you have 14 celestial degrees full, right? And then he says in the copper, you're merchant. Mm -hmm. uh, that means Vaishikul ke hai, Rajo Pradhan hai, or art. There are eight celestial degrees full. And then when we come to the Iron Age, then we are in our um, Tamo Pradhan stage. We belong to Shudra clan. But then when we come to Confluence Sage, then we again are Brahmins, the most elevated clan. Baba talks about clans and caste and, you know, descendants of being Sh Sh Shiv Vanshi and all of that. Why? Because that will help us to activate the sanskars. Hmm? And we'll go a little bit in depth of each of these now. So we'll go in the reverse order, right? We'll first see the Iron Age, then the Copper Age, then Silver, and then Golden Age. Hmm? So here is the Iron Age. And what we know um, that what happens on the Kal in Kalyug is basically there is a lot of adulteration, right? And there is a lot of um, um, basically everyone and everything is worshipped, right? On the path of devotion. So not believe in one deity. There are two, three, four like that. But for us, for Brahmins specifically, you know, I'm saying that we have to deal with these five main vices, right? 
of course, people also have this outsiders, but now we're just focusing on us as PKs, right? So the five main vices is the algae, right? The algae is anger, lust, greed, attachment, and ego. Right? The calm, road, low, mo, ahankar, those are the five vices. And then if we look at them, you know, in Shivratri's Avyakt Murli, Baba said that, yes, ye to panch mahabhut hai. Lekin, there are many subtle vices, right, which are tamopradhan. And so first, very easily, you would know that it is a tamopradhan sanskar the, if there is reaction. Reaction is usually a sign of tamopradhan sanskar, right? Uh, fear or too much ignorance, not understanding things, rejection, you know, rejecting somebody or holding grudge against somebody, giving a silent treatment. If your nature is very sensitive and, you know, you have critical vision, if there is a lot of doubt, I don't know if I will really come in golden age. Um, I'm not sure, you know, or I don't know if I'm really worthy of Baba's love. You know, these thoughts, <laughs> they are, they're not really elevated thoughts, right? If Baba says you are worthy, you are Satyugi soul, you are Satopradhan, then why should I doubt? Right? Do you feel that? So I don't want to doubt Baba's intention, Baba's vision on me is very elevated, very high. So I want to see myself with Baba's vision, right? Then hopelessness, sometimes there's a lot of laziness, feeling that I'm not connected to anyone, anything, you know, depressed, nothing is working for me, the world is against me, victim of everything. So this is all Tamopradhan Sanskars, right? And I want to tell you one thing up front, maybe I should say, that we are here on the conference site, right? And Confluence Age Me Baba never says that you are Tamo or Sato or, you know, he hasn't given one particular stage to this age. So what it means that Brahmins are always fluctuating between these stages, right? And so don't think that, oh, if I have this, you know, disheartenment sanskar, that means I am Tamo. No, not like that. You just recognize that this is one sanskar that I need to deal with. Hmm? If I am in this anywhere here, and my aim is to now from Tamopradhan reach to Rajo, right? First I have to go to Rajo, right? Then I will go to Sab. So if I have to go to Rajo, then I have to know that this is my enemy. This sanskar is my enemy, right? This algae or this vice, whatever. And I have to deal with it, right? And so I have to move up in that way. So think in that way, yeah? If you have questions, you can stop me anytime. But also at the end, we will have opportunity to share um, some time for Q&A. So then when we go forward, when we come to corporate, what do you see instantly in the slide? What is the first thing that you notice in the slide? Do you notice anything or no? Okay, <laughs> nice. Anything else? A na uh, nature worshippers. We become nature worshippers. We become nature worshippers. Okay. What else do you see? What do you see on the screen? Like here, what is the, do you see something different than the previous one? The color? Yeah, what is, what is it about the color? light green color and um, cream color light pink color okay so what you duality? think duality right so this is the slide where i had two colors purposefully because this is the age when we become rajo pradhan or rajo right and this is the time when duality comes in until this point the trunk of the tree is one, right? You bring in your course pictures also. So the tree, if you see, it is one trunk until the time Silver Age is there. It's only after Silver Age that there is duality. New tubes of the, of the tree emerge, right? And Copper Age in Hindi is called as? Copper Age in Hindi is called as? 
द्वापर युग एंड द्वापुर मीन्स टू टू Duality. two ways yeah right so two ways right so when we are in golden age and silver age there is complete unity right but it is only when we first step into copper age that duality begins so all the words in the dictionary the the vocabulary increases right it is at this time that opposite words exist and so you will see the most thing um that you could catch that oh i am in rajo pradhan stage or i am rajo is one there will be duality and second very easily impressed and influenced right and so in my nature i would see or oh, have preferences you know i like this one very much i don't like this one so much i like to do seva with this one i don't like to do seva with this one this one is my center this one is not you know your center um, and then morality has some space here but morality is not equal to spirituality right and so morality says that okay you don't give sorrow but it's okay to take sorrow but spirituality baba says not to take sorrow so again if i'm taking sorrow i'm not giving sorrow but i'm taking sorrow then that is also a copper age sanskar there's lot of confusion at this time there are lot of desires wants lot of wants chahiye 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 there's lot of dependencies hmm? bhakti sanskars now i wrote bhakti so what is bhakti sanskar what is first thing come in your mind when i say bhakti sanskar bhakti mein kya karte hain mangte hain mangte hain very good so in bhakti you're constantly asking you're very needy you need this you need that so that is bhakti sanskar right but i'm constantly asking god for some help something and bhakti sanskar is low self esteem so i say to the deity oh i am you know not good enough you are so elevated i many ch papi kapti kya kya apne aap ko right so we put down degrade ourselves a lot and so low self esteem is a bhakti sanskar hmm? and baba never says na ki tum papi ho kapti ho <laughs> does he ever use that language no so that is bhakti sanskar and insecurity there's a lot of insecurity but also bhakti sanskar is where you go to the temple you go in front of your deity and you give a script to god as to what you should do bhagwan aap ye kar do ye aisa hoga merchant kya karte hai this is also uh, you can co- correlate with merchant quality merchants kya karte hai they do business they do business and business mein kya karte hai deal ha huh? deal <laughs> right very good so they make deals right they have this give and take that you do so much i will do so much right so mandir mein ja kar kya karte hai bhagwan you pass me in my exams and i will give 10 coconuts to you you do yeah. this for me i will do this for you so this is bhakti sanskar right merchant quality is give and take and so if with baba also i sit and say baba aap mera ye kaam kar do main itna contribute karunga baba aap mera ye kar do to main aisa karunga baba aap aisa kar so this is bhakti sanskar right um and then there is lot of fluctuation because myself my self esteem is low i will easily be fluctuated i will easily be impressed i will easily be disturbed you know so that is over achieving over ambitious over passionate this is all um corporate sanskars okay so then we come to silver age hmm? and it is in silver age that the main thing that you would recognize is the conflict sanskar of conflict that means on the sangam yug on the confluence age i am not easily victorious i will i will become victorious but it is through battling through fighting so any time i sit in yoga say for example i make time to sit in yoga for 20 minutes aur usme se 15 minute to mere pure waste ho gaye past ke thoughts aa rahe hain ye ho raha hai wo ho raha hai i'm fighting i'm not this i'm not that i'm not worthy i'm not good you know so that kind of is one of the signs now i was seeing i remember that morley very well where sister deepika was reading on last tuesday and baba talked a lot about different sanskars of being impressed and being careless and there was this 
and even before, I think some sister had asked this question about that I am very right and I want to fight for rightness, right? So, so what, do, what is that, right? And I was thinking it's a very interesting point. You know, one time I was in Peace Village and I was helping Sister Gayatri. Sister Gayatri is Lokik daughter of uncle and auntie, you know, who Baba mentions a lot in the Awake Murlis. They were the first instruments to do service in Diana and then United States. So anyway, so one time she shared with me that something happened in the, in the family, in the yagya. And she felt that it was extremely um, wrong. It was a big injustice that was happening. And so she went to Dadi Janki and she shared the whole situation, whole story. And Dadi heard her, you know, but she remained very quiet like Dadis do. And then she said um, uh, that because Dadi didn't say anything, Sister Gayatri told to her, but Dadi, did you hear me? I want to be right. I want to do what is right. You know, I don't want this injustice to happen. And then Dadi said to her, well, you don't need to take sides because you don't know the entire story. And of course, Dadi also doesn't know, but she's, she's just saying this, that we should not take sides and we should not fight. She said, don't fight. And Sister Gayatri said that she realized that when she is reacting from this past sanskar of, you know, not being tolerant to injustice, then it's disturbing her, right? And so Dadi said to her, if you are honest, then somebody who is dishonest will not disturb you. That is true honesty. This was Dadi's definition. And so I was remembering Ram, right? Ram and Sita, what do they show about them is that when Ram was given this punishment to go into one vase by his mother, Kekai, he never questioned her. Right? And that is why he's called Maryada Purushottam. So that is the sign that I will not fight in the sense of for my values. And one time I remember uh, there was call of the time retreat and I am a sevadhari for that retreat. Usually it happens alternate years in Peace Village. And I think it was 2018 or 2019. And Sister Jayanti was here as a resource person, as a spiritual resource person. And so uh, during those times, and even now, there is a lot of racism and things like that happening in United States. And I think one of the guests asked her about it. And then Sister Jayanti said, you know, before uh, Moini Didi and Jayanti Didi, they would take a spiritual resource. It was Dadi Janki who would always be the spiritual resource person. And she shared that when Dadi was there, there was one guest who had come from Africa. And some of you might be aware that in Africa, it is, there are a lot of things happening which should not happen, but there are a lot of uh, problems, but the main thing, main thing is racism, right? And so Dadi in one of the sessions was talking a lot about peace and being peace messengers and being, you know, calm and quiet and accumulating the power of peace and blah, blah, blah. And then this brother at the end of the session gets up and goes to Dadi and said, Dadi, what you're saying about being, you know, messenger of peace and, you know, all of that is okay. But I have to fight for my people. I have to fight for justice. There is a lot of injustice in my country. And Dadi said, injustice is wrong fighting for injustice is wrong. So wrong and wrong, two wrongs do not make anything right. Do you think fighting for injustice will give you justice? And I don't know, she said, you know, Sister Jayanti, I don't know what it was, but that guest was so touched. And it was Dadi's presence, of course, I think, but uh, he was touched that this is the truth. It is the power of peace, you know, that we understand will bring golden age, will bring total justice, right? And so I cannot just use this weapon of, oh, I don't like somebody being unjust or I want to be right or I want to be correct, you know? So, so, so this kind of fighting or conflict is not what we want as a Sato Pradhan soul. But yeah, if we still end up doing that, then that is one of the 
वन ऑफ द संस्कार बाबा सेज नो क्यों राम के हाथ में बांध दिखाते हैं वाई डू दे शो दिस वट इज इट कॉल्ड इन इंग्लिश बो एन एरो राइट वाई डू दे कॉल वाई डू दे शो बो एन एरो ही इज ऑलवेज रेडी टू फाइट ही इज ऑलवेज रेडी टू रिमूव द एरो एंड हिट इट सो दैट्स वाई दैट इज अ संस्कार सो दैट टू डिग्रीज आर लेस यू नो सो दैट्स बिकॉज ऑफ दैट प्योरिटी एंड रिमेम्बरेंस दैट्स वाई वी लूज टू डिग्रीज बट दैट्स about sato stage and then the sato pradhan stage is where there is so here um sato pradhan stage is where there is everything automatic kind of automatic you know everything is very natural naturally you are a divine person very easily you sit in remembrance of baba and you're easily connected so you're easily victorious hmm? so 16 celestial degrees full baba says the ones who are in the golden age their every activity i think this was 1971 72 when baba said that every activity of theirs will become an art and will become a kirtan on the path of devotion they will sing the praise of their actions on the path of devotion because they are full of all virtues their 16 celestial degrees complete they complete wiseless their supreme religion is non violence and they follow all codes of conduct this is the sign of the deity religion deity never accepts anything they don't need anything so one of the big difference if you want to understand between sato pradhan and sato is that i don't know how much time i have okay is that um if someone has absolutely no love for me and i know that i am aware that their good will is not there for me and yet i don't feel upset i'm not upset and i maintain the good will for them knowing that they don't have the good will for me i continue to give good wishes to them that is sato pradhan stage and one of the bhog messages for dadi gulzar was that she always had good wishes for every soul moini didi has stayed with her and she was saying she never saw dadi gulzar disappointed by anybody i mean such a big victory right never disappointed by anyone so this is sato pradhan stage which is very benevolent which is very much like god you know you become completely like god the stage of equanimity and you don't do things because you're going to get something or you know it's a pure joy of doing not because i'll get 100000 likes or not because 100 people should attend the session no it's just because i enjoy <laughs> sharing right what i have received so i share and that is sato pradhan sanskar so very auspicious their presence will be very auspicious and of course this is not the complete list i will put that out there you can think more there are more things that you can add to this but then this is the image that is representation of golden age right and they always show this mace pointing downwards that means he's already victorious he's already attained victory and so now he's just standing like that if he was not victorious then the mace would have been on his shoulder right ready to fight but he doesn't need to fight his mace is down that is a signature that he is a victorious soul and so every being who is in this uh, state sato pradhan is always giving right so that is sato pradhan the and conference which i don't have too much time <laughs> to go into the details of this um but i would say that confluence age is more about dying alive right you completely lose the awareness of this character you know and so um, of course we saw that you have full right you will feel i have right over baba you will feel i have right to be in the golden age you know uh, you will feel that you are heir of baba you are an heir quality of varis ho so there will be that intoxication that i am the soul and my baba one time when i was in international youth forum attending a session um, they used to call ratan moini dadi a lot because she is responsible right for the youth wing and youths 
And so one time they were interviewing her and they said, Daddy, what was your initial effort? And Daddy said, for many, many years, we did not know anything, but I am a soul and I belong to Baba. I am child of God. That's it. For many years, that was their practice. And that was their intoxication. And that was their foundation. That I am a soul and I am God's child. Period. Don't need to think about much. So then I said, know your enemy, right? So if you see yourself having some tamo sanskars, then, and if you want to reach Rajo Pradhan, then those are your enemies. If you are in Rajo Pradhan, you want to reach Sato, then know that Rajo is your enemy. If you are in Sato, you want to reach Sato Pradhan, then know that Sato is your enemy, right? You want to become Sato Pradhan. So like that. Um, follow only Srimad. This is a big chapter in and of itself but one thing I will say is that we tend to mix manmat and get confused um, thinking that manmat is equal to Srimad sometimes you know um, but I don't have time to go into the depth of it so what we want to do is I must always be in Baba's range of Drishti Baba's Drishti is always on me so my Drishti is always on Baba so if you have that awareness, then all these old sanskars will not influence you. And so one time a brother, uh, Charlie Bhai, you know, some of you know, is from Australia. He was here in Florida doing a retreat. And the theme of the retreat was something around love. And he was talking about this. He asked us this question. Are you ready to be loved to death? Hmm? Are you ready to be loved to death? And I didn't understand this question at the time. But later, um, there was a day when I heard this song, Preet Bani Hai Duniya Mein Mar Jane Ke Liye. And this point just clicked. I was like, ah, that's what he was asking. Are you ready to be loved to the death? Because when Baba comes, he wants us to die alive. He wants us to kill this character. Like I say, with this character, character is Sister Tina, right? Or, or this Brahma Kumari Tina, right? Is a character. Uh, she's a Kumari. She has a research lab, whatever. You, you have to die from this identity or this character consciousness and just know yourself as a soul. Or emerge, perhaps, uh, replace it with this angel, right? I am an angel. I am God's instrument. I'm transparent light. I only reflect light. I only reflect God's sanskars. So this, this is why I said um, that you just, if you can do this, who am I and who do I belong to? Um, my Baba, right? That's all we need to really become Sato Pradhan. And this is my last slide for the day. And I just want to say, share a few pointers with you. Um, I used to never love silence. I was a very talkative person. And when I was back in the center living, uh, at Pune, I was from Pune. And Didi used to give us days. You know, sisters used to get days that, OK, this day, this sister will be in silence. This day, this sister will be in silence. And whenever it would come my chance, they, they used to say, Pitri ko to bas do ghanta hi de do, you know. She used to call me Pitri means this child, you know, this one. If she remains in silence for two hours, that is enough. So they would ask me to only be in silence till 12 and I would be so happy. But after coming to States, I realized that silence is like that dip in the Ganges that we take. You know, it is only when I go into silence, I will be purified and I will come out in a very different form. I have a lot of love for silence. And now I feel all the time that Baba has given us in 2020. And now it's I've used quite a bit in silence. So I think this is a very beautiful practice. If we can do one day in a week, that is great. If we cannot, then at least we should try and do a few hours every day. Srimat, this point I already shared, not to mix with Manmat or Parmat. And Dadi Janki, Baba said in the Bhog message that Dadi was an embodiment of knowledge, right? 
dadi was embodiment of many things of course but if you look at three dadis then dadi prakashmani was known for her love and dadi janki for her knowledge and dadi gulzar was embodiment of silence right embodiment of really that peace right and so if we listen to dadis for just 15 minutes a day i mean you all are listening to avyakt murli every day which is very beautiful i'm really very happy to see this service going so beautifully um but that really helps because dadis sessions really inspire you to think and to churn and to bring something new out from you and so value your values don't say oh this one gave me sorrow so i took sorrow i have to value my happiness my happiness is way more important to me than somebody else hurting me right so but we don't value our values and the last one is maintain your chart because that is the only way to know or gauge where i am right so those are some of the things i felt i could share of course there are many stories many things you can share but i think i will stop now and i will give you the opportunity to share um anything you want to share or you want to comment or you want to ask you know it's just an open floor now i see now the chat messages okay Chida Ben, what is the subtle difference that one can check between Sato and Sato Pradhan Sanskar? So one example I already gave you about giving uh, goodwill. The second example can be so. For example, you have seen a child, like a baby. They are so beautiful, right? Little yeah. children are so beautiful, but they are not aware of that beauty. themselves that ignorance is golden age of stage i am beautiful but i'm not aware and that is golden age of stage and when that child grows a little big little big the child is still beautiful but now he's aware that i am beautiful that little awareness is there and that is sato stage if that makes sense so it's a very subtle difference there are only 2 degrees less right from 16 we come to 14 and the 2 degrees are only less in remembrance and purity mm. sato pradhan is you become pavan pavan bolte usko pavitrata aur pavanta are two different words in hindi there is no english word for pavan i feel you know we just translate as purity but really pavan is even greater than pavitrata to so pavan i think is sato pradhan stage really okay. there is no difference between god and sato pradhan stage you know and uh, that's why when you see this um, oh hold on sorry when you see this uh, image this one you see when this is still silver age and when you are in the golden age there's really no difference between supreme soul and i i'm so close i'm so close to baba i reflect god's qualities constantly so i, I don't know if that really helps you to distinguish Um, yes i have been got it the example was very beautiful of a child not knowing his own beauty you know yeah, that yeah. connects very well yeah thank you so much so in satyu in confluence age remember we are all fluctuating so don't feel that oh i have this sanskar and so i'm not so good so don't ever feel that this the the intention of this session is not to hmm, you know beat ourselves or anything like that but to use this knowledge to our advantage you know again one of the book i I'm, i'm remembering all the bhog messages because they're so fresh in my mind um baba said that dadi gulzar used the power of transformation and she transformed knowledge 
into virtues and powers. So if I have knowledge, then I transform it and I make that knowledge as my virtues and my powers. I use it in that way. So that really helps us to bring that sato pradhanta, bring that purity. You know, remember Baba, right? Tina been given in current uh, space. We all are in gyan, but it's it's been you know you you know all of this, and while you go back and perform or you are performing a karma. How do one catch themselves in all of these sanskars that, sanskars that shows up? Because the journey of 63 births definitely shows up and the sanskar shows up. So what, how do we do that sadaka part here? How do we constantly look at checking these different kinds of sanskars? And I think the only answer is, oh, you want to complete? Sorry. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm done. Okay, so the only effort is attention. I have to pay attention. Like I will tell you, I did not realize for a long period of time that silent treatment is a tamo pradhan sanskar. And usually agar meri kisi se nahi banegi, to I will think in my mind that why to create more conflict? Let that person be happy where he is. Let me be happy where I am. And let's just be happy not talk to each other and you know like you are on your own i am on my own and basically i am giving a silent treatment i would meet that person in the center i would not say anything i would see that person at programs and i would not say anything and of course he or she will also not say anything but this is silent treatment right is cold war right so I real when I heard yeah. this for the first time that silent treatment is Tamo Pradhan Sanskar, immediately I changed myself. I was like, I can't be here. I can't be in Tamo Pradhan stage. So I said, okay, I will talk. Even if he doesn't talk, it's okay. I will just, you know, do whatever is my job. But I will not just give a silent treatment anymore to anybody. That's that's the promise I made to myself. So when you see yourself in that situation, and you if you have attention, you will catch yourself. But then you tell, oh, no, oh I know now that this is Rajo quality. Baba ko mein aise kyun bolti ho ki Baba ap mera ye kam kar do, fir mein aapka ye kam karungi, you know. So I have to let go of this habit, which is a habit from bhakti, and we can't, you know, 63 births, we have done that. So we need little time to let go of it, which is fine, but that's what we have to do. Right? So attention. There is a last... Um... Yes, Manjupan, you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, since your, the session was really nice. I want to ask one question. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you deal with this self-esteem issue? Because uh, Baba tells, uh, gives us so much of swama and self-respect. But then you think, is that really you? At some point, uh, you can't digest what Baba is telling. Yeah, yeah. And so only thing you, you should tell to yourself that God is truth. God is equal to truth. Yeah. Bhagwan kabhi jhoot boli nahi sakta hai. Main apne aap se bol sakti hu, aina bol sakta hai, log bol sakta hai, right? All of that. Can. So basically when Baba says to us to be soul conscious, what he's telling us, he's telling us, come in my vision. Come mm -hmm. under my vision. There is a beautiful story about this, but I don't have time to share. Yeah, you know, okay. if at some other time I will share that story about this but what you should do is really tell yourself i don't there are three types of visions mm -hmm. vision of the self vision of vision of the self towards the self vision of others towards me and vision of god towards me mm -hmm. okay and so you tell yourself i don't want to use the vision of my own towards myself because that is also very critical i right. cannot forgive myself sometimes people will forgive i will not so very critical we are others mm -hmm. They have biased perception. If I'm good with them, they're good with me. They have good opinion. If I'm not good with them, they don't have good opinion. So they will, you know, mm -hmm. not uh, have good vision. So that's also very biased. Oh, it's only God's vision that is pure, original, and true. 
And so mm-hmm. I tell myself that I want to sit with Baba. Just like I have shown you in the beginning of Baba's eyes, if you were there, and you tell, I look into Baba's eyes, and I take Baba's drishti, and I really merge myself into Baba's drishti, and I allow Baba to merge into my drishti, so that I start looking at myself the way Baba looks at me. Mm-hmm. I start looking at myself the way Baba looks at me. And how do you know how Baba looks at you? Through Murli's. Through Murli's, right. Absolutely. So Baba tells you in the morning that you are my air child, right? You mm. are the ones with divine intellect. So you tell yourself, Baba says this. So I am this. Mm-hmm. even if your mind tries to counter you know give some other thing you tell no but i am this baba tells me so i will trust baba more so you have to have this interaction with your mind mm-hmm. and i can tell you with guarantee that brahmins are the ones who have very low self esteem yeah right <laughs> that's the biggest reason why we cannot progress with mm-hmm. that skill, including myself <laughs> Okay. Thank you, sister. Thanks a lot. Yes, sure. Okay. So, Puneet Bhai, we have last activity for all of you. I know it's getting late, so I'm really sorry about the time. Um, but we would like to do that, right, Puneet Bhai? Okay. Let's do this quickly. You all see, right? Okay, only one has answered. There is a poll. We if everyone submit button. Huh? We cannot they have to submit button yet. Why? I'm not sure. There's two questions, but the submit button is not activated. Uh, no, there are five questions. Five. So you oh, go the down below. Next. Yeah, you go down and there are five questions. Only three, four of you answered. Okay. Is this anonymous? Yes, this is anonymous. Yes, yes, yes. You're safe. <laughs> I don't know what you say. <laughs> okay. Shall we stop? Only 45% of you answered. Others, you want to answer? Oh, we are viewing the results. So even if someone throws stones at you, you don't take sorrow. That is Sato Pradhan Sanskar. I'm not taking sorrow. And if I'm not taking sorrow, I will be definitely in a position to give good wishes. That's what Tati Chanki says. So that's Sato Pradhan. If I become an image that shows the qualities of Baba, then that is Sato Pradhan, 73%. Very nice, you all are doing good. My head and heart is in complete alignment, no conflict, then that is Sato Pradhan, correct. If someone helps me in return, I also help them, that is Rajo, very good. And if I always tell Baba what he must do, then that is Rajo, that is Rajo, right? Because there is duality. I have Bhavna for Baba, but then I also have Manokamna mixed in that. That's a Raj, that's mixture. Again, duality, mixture, adulteration, you know, ambivalence. These are some of the qualities of Rajo Pradhan or Rajo. Okay. Wonderful session. I, I guess everyone did very well. You all understood. So majority of you did good. Right. 
55 above. Wonderful. I also had one feedback form, but it's not opening right now for me. So I guess I will leave it. Do you want to try opening it, uh, Tina Ben, or should we go ahead? Yeah, oh, I, I was able to open. Okay, hold on, let's see. Here, can you all see this link? Yes. If you click on that. I'm trying this first time, so I don't know if this will work. But there's nothing here, is it? Oh, I don't think there's anything. Okay, never mind, just leave it. Just leave that out for now. We'll try that next time. So it's first time we use the poll feature of uh, Zoom. So it was interesting. And thank you so much, Puneet Bhai. I really disturbed him a lot. <laughs> but he's such a wonderful soul. Very, very helpful. So thank you so much. And thank you, Rakhi Ben and the team for arranging the session. Thank you so much, Tina Ben. But before we close, invite you to take a quick small meditation. Okay. Do we... Okay, let's just sit. in silence and in this moment I just become aware of the reward when I look at Baba and I take Baba's Trishti I can see the pride he has for his child Baba's Drishti tells me that I am a worthy child of Baba. Baba's Drishti tells me that I am his heir child. So feel feel that honor that respect he has for you. You are a golden aged soul, Sato Pradhan, most elevated soul. I just have to let go of the acquired stuff and emerge the true diamond. So as I am taking Drishti from Baba, I make this promise to myself that I will continue to see myself as Baba sees me. This is the biggest gift I can give to myself. And this is being faithful, being obedient, not doubting what God says, but accepting his love, accepting the truth that he tells me. So whole day, I will see myself as a deity, walk as a deity, sit as a deity, talk as a deity, live my life as a deity. Om Shanti. Thank you so much, Tina Ben, for such a wonderful and informative session. Okay, thank you, each one of you, for participating. Um, the participation really makes it lively. So thanks a lot. Have a wonderful day ahead. Om Shanti. Thank you, everyone. Thank Have you, Sister. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. You all tomorrow morning, the same time at 5 30.